Hello everyone and welcome. This is Christine with Pattern Crafts and today I'll be making four cards using the August 2020 Flavor of the Month card kit. Here I have a sheet of the card sketches for the month of August. Each month Scrapping for Less puts together four card sketches. The design team uses those as inspiration to create with the kit. If you would like your own set you can head on over to the Scrapping for Less website, hit the Downloads tab, and you can print off your own copy for this month or any of the previous months. This month is a little different. I do not have a reveal video. One of the stamp sets in the collection was replaced, and I don't think I, well, I have not yet received one of the banana split pieces and um, the video I had created before I made my cards just isn't going to be accurate, so I opted not to include it this month. My apologies. But we are going to make four cards with the, with the kit, and hopefully you can see what's here. There's also some really great photos, um, so you can check all that out to see what you'll get in the kit this month. So for collection one, I am using sketch number three. I thought this would be most appropriate for my stamps. So usually what I do when I'm looking at the card sketches is I determine what stamp sets came in the kit and what one would go best with each sketch. So for sketch number four, it shows that the top and the bottom would be your card base. And I decided it was just too plain to be a card base. So I'm grabbing the Bubbles background stencil. That is part of the banana split pack for the month of August. So I went ahead and grabbed that and some peacock feathers distressing from my stash to add a little bit of design and interest to the top and bottom pieces. Now, of course, it wouldn't be me without trimming some kind of pattern paper a little short. So my original thought process of using the duckies didn't work because that piece was too short. And then when I put the striped piece on, it just was just a little shy from the card base. So I decided to take that excess off. The other two strips I'm using are just quarter inch thick. I added those on with some Tombow Mono glue and trimmed off the excess. Now the fun part, we are going to stamp out the images that we are going to be using for the card. I don't show the coloring of any of the stamps in this video to save on time because it's already kind of lengthy showing the creation of four cards. But I do show the stamping right here and I think this is the no, this might not be the only one I show in the video as far as stamping, but regardless, <clears throat> I have stamped out all of the images. They are colored, and I used my brother's scan and cut to cut those out. Now, I did cut out the portion of the video where I had first put down the sentiment, and I didn't like it, so when I pulled it back up, I tore the pattern paper. So this part here, you have me kind. You see me trying to figure out how to cover up that little bit of a rip. And in this video, unless you knew, like I, if I didn't tell you that that was a rip right there, you might not notice. But it's very noticeable in person. So I just fiddled with a bunch of different ways, and then decided I was going to use the soap image I cover, I colored to cover it. So I'm adding the little bathtub with the rubber duckies with foam tape and I'm going to add the sentiment piece here. I stamped that out and added some peacock feathers all around it and I did end up having to trim it a little bit smaller because I didn't want it to be bigger than the tub. I want, really want that tub to stand out. So I popped that up on some foam tape on one side and used liquid glue to adhere the other part to the tub. I've added two sets of bubbles, some enamel dots, and now I'm working on the inside of the card. Using the sentiment happy birthday from the stamp set, added the soap image, and now I'm just adding some blue-green Copic marker 
all around that sentiment. The sentiment was kind of small, so I just wanted to add a little something more to the inside of that card. Once that's done, I want my bubbles here to have a little dimension and sparkle. So we are adding some white blizzard nouveau glitter drops just to the bubbles outside of the tub. On the to the bubbles on the inside of the tub, I do end up adding not during the video, but later, I do add a little bit of the Spectrum Noir glitter brush to those bubbles. So for card number two, I'm using Good sketch markets. number four. Yeah, this little chicken cracks me up. Him and he is chewing on that bubble gum. So he's all colored up and ready to go. And the ephemera in this collection includes two pieces that tell a joke. So the first piece I'll use on the front of my card, and then I'm going to use the punchline piece on the inside. But right now we're going to get our pattern paper pieces together. This pattern paper definitely has a vintage feel, and you can see from that blue piece that there's a lot of distressing that's already in the pattern paper. So to carry that along and make a nice edge for that oval piece, I did use some vintage photo distressing just to add along the edge. It will help it pop out on the flower paper here. And I just thought it would be great to carry on that vintage feel, that little distressed look. Here I am struggling hard with this pink ribbon and a bow. What I don't know what it is with me and bows. I just can't seem to figure out how to do it without using half a roll of, of ribbon. But we struggle. I am calling it a win, even if it's not exactly what I hoped for, but it's there. So we're going to go ahead and add the oval piece directly onto that cardstock and the chicken directly on the oval piece but we will pop up the first part of this joke uh, onto on some foam tape. Adding a few enamel dots and then we'll work on the inside and hop on over to my blog if you'd like to read what the joke says. I'll leave a link to my blog post that's associated with the card hop in the description below. So on the inside, I'm just again adding that little chicken. We'll add the inside piece um, for the punch line. I'm gonna carry along that distressed look onto the edge of this white piece with again, some more of that vintage photo distressing. I'm gonna finish this card off with a little bit of glossy accents on that bubble gum and call that done. So next we're going to move on to card number three. Must have forgotten to speed this part up because this is not lasting an awful long time. Um, so moving on to card number three, I'm using sketch number one. My initial um thought process for this was I was going to make this a shaker piece and it's pretty much I go through like it's a shaker piece until I have to add the sequins on the inside but for right now I'm cutting down my pattern paper as shown in the sketch I've got my main panel piece here and then I'm going to use one of the um it's like a really light blue with pink polka dots. I'm trying to bring some of the pink out because I'm going to use the enamel dots and I'm going to use the twine and those are pink. So I'm using the, it's, I think it's a light blue and a pink that's, that's for my frame. So just use two square dies to make that frame. I've gone ahead and cut out this white piece to go underneath it so that I can stamp out the image with this little fish blowing out his birthday candle so cute getting that placed on there so that i know where it will fit in my window at this point i also know i'm going to be adding a sentiment to that upper right hand corner at this point i haven't decided which sentiment i'm going to use but i leave enough room um, for both of them 
I do end up opting for this make a wish sentiment. I was so happy that I was able to cut this out with my brother's scan and cut. I just had to connect all of the pieces so it would cut all around. And then once it did cut out, I erased all of those. And now we're coloring the wish part here with some pink Copic markers. Again, just trying to bring in pink in a lot of different places. I've already colored our little scene and that will be ready to go. I didn't do too much with what's around it because at this point it's still gonna be a shaker card, right? So we are going to now add the foam tape to our window. These little foam strips are included in the banana split portion of the pack. So if you order the banana split or if you subscribe to the banana split level, you will get these little strips. These strips were actually really nice to use. I've used some other ones in the past that were super sticky and then it made it really hard to um, lay them down. But these ones were not, um, they definitely are a hold up. They just, my last experience was like, uh, you couldn't, they stuck to your fingers. Like I just couldn't maneuver them. And um, these did not. So I really liked these. So this is kind of the point where I decide I really don't think I can make this a shaker card because I'm looking at these sequins, which come in the banana split portion of the card kit. And if I put them all in there, they're going to hang out in front of that really cool scene with the cake and him blowing the, the candle out. So I opt to make what I call a faux shaker card. <laughs> so I adhered a bunch of sequins all around in that like watery space and around the fish um and i don't add any more in there because that bottom scene i really probably should have gone further up so the seat if the sequence sat down there it wouldn't cover up that cake and stuff but you know i was still really happy with how this piece came out so now that that little window piece is done i'm going to finish up my card i'm wrapping some of the twine down at the bottom. And because of the thickness of it, I am gonna pop this up on foam tape. So this is gonna be a pretty thick card. So probably be one that I won't mail. It'd be one that I would wanna give to somebody directly just cause we've got you know, a layer of foam tape here and we have our window, which is up on foam. I do adhere the window piece onto my card base with liquid glue and then I'm also adhering the Make-A-Wish, but I used some ATG for that. Mostly because I already had ATG on it from when I glued it on or adhered it to my brother's scan and cut mat. I use um, the ATG tape runner to hold my images down when my mat starts to lose its stickiness. So moving on to the inside of the card, I'm using the other sentiment from the stamp set that says celebrate today. Add some pink polka dots around that with a Copic marker and we will call the inside of that card finished. And I did add two of those hot pink enamel dots there to the bottom. So lastly, we've got this really interesting sketch that involved a lot of circles. Now this is the collection that they changed the um, stamp set. So we're just working with all the other elements, which um, the ephemera is um, sentiment ephemera. So it really works out just fine. I did bring in the bubbles background stencil again with some dusty Concord distress ink for like a tone on tone background here. Um, we are going to be adding some one inch circles to the front of the card and I just thought having it on plain cardstock was kind of boring. So I am finding all the plain sides of the pattern paper for my circles. The other side has bubbles and honestly I didn't even try to see if the bubble pattern would even look good. Um, I thought maybe the one inch punch was too small to show how cool the bubble pattern paper is. It's really fun. 
I can't wait to get the stamp in so that we can play with the bubble side of it. I probably could have here or used a different sketch, but um, in the end, this card is kind of interesting. So I can fit 16 of these little circles all along the front. So I'm just using some liquid glue here so that I have time to move them if needed. And I'm just kind of going around. I did not do any measuring. I just tried to eyeball to see if I could get a somewhat even distribution of all of these circles. Once those are all set, I'm going to take a look at the ephemera and I'm just kind of deciding what is going to go best. Um, I do opt for this one, this like little banner piece. I think it's going to fit best with how I've created my card. Once I put that on there, I decided though these bubbles were still a, a little boring. So I thought what I would do is make basically make them into bubbles. So I am using a white gel pen and adding highlights there to that right hand side on every single one of them. I was really pleased with how it came out and we'll add our banner sentiment right here. And then I use all the enamel dots that came in this collection on the front of this card. They were super cool. They were like a um, purpley, clear, um, glossy. They were really pretty. Just need to straighten out that sentiment a little bit. It looked like it was a little too much to the left. So to finish this card, I am cutting just some white cardstock, a little bit smaller than the card. I think it's four and three quarters by four and three quarters. And then we're gonna add more of the uh, ephemera pieces here with some dots. So thank you so very much for joining me today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hop along with us in the blog hop. I'll leave a link in the description below. But until next time, everyone, have a great day. Bye.